Hi guys, Wandersun here. In this tutorial, I will teach you how to create a custom toggle button with a modern interface where you can use it to replace the standard Q checkbox of Qt tools using Qt widgets. In this widget, we can change its width, color, and animation curve. Before we start, if you are not yet subscribed to the channel, please subscribe and leave your like. To start, let's open VS Code and create a window to test our application. To speed up the tutorial I already created this window where it only has a frame with a dark color and a layout where we will add the widgets. When we run the application we see that we don't have any widgets added inside. I'll create a simple button just to test if everything is working and add to the layout with central alignment. See that a button is displayed correctly, we can exchange that button for a Q checkbox, which will be the widgets that we will use as the basis for our toggle button. After that we will create a folder for our widgets with the name PyToggle, a Python init file, and another file called PyToggle. Let's create a class called PyToggle and copy the PySide 6 modules into our new module. Add the Q checkbox to inherit your existing objects, events, and start the class as shown in the video. Create the parameters, width, bg color, circle color, and active color in the init function. These will be the parameters that we can customize within our custom toggle button. Inside the init file in the PyToggle folder import the class we just created. In our main window we are going to add this package we just created and also add the new class PyToggle to the layout. Note that when we add the class a standard Q checkbox is displayed, because we are inheriting all objects within our new class we have just created, as well as its interface and events. If we change this class to a new widget like the button we will generate a button in our interface, this process is valid for any other widget within the Qt tools. Let's add a fixed width and height to our widget and also change your cursor. Before running the application, return to the Q checkbox object in PyToggle. See that it is working correctly and the cursor changes when the muse is over. After that, create the color objects below to have access within the entire class. The next step is to create the paint event function that will be responsible for redesigning our widget. See that the default widget disappears after adding this event. This is because it overrides the default layout. Let's start by adding a Q painter. Set the render hint as anti-aliasing to smooth the edges of the paintings and also set the pen as no pen. After that we will create a rectangle that will be like a container for our elements, set the width and height being the same as that of our custom widget. To draw the background color we will first set a brush using Q color that will receive the object we created above containing the background color. Let's add a rounded rectangle that will have the width and width equal to our rectangle created above. At the rounded edges we can place the height divided by 2. A Q painter always needs to end with end, otherwise an error will be generated. See the background was created successfully. We will create a function to debug our widget whenever your state changes. 
Connect this event to a function called debug and print out its current state. See that the click is only working on the left side of the widget, this is because hit button remains the same as the original widget. We can change this click area so that it covers the entire widget area using the function below, called hit button, which will now fill the entire widget area. Set the function to return the self, content, rectangle. See that now the entire area is correctly identifying the clicks of the mouse. The next step is to create the circle that will be inside the button. Let's set a brush again with the circle color property that we created above and also draw an ellipse. Place the dimensions as shown in the video. The next step now is to change the circle position if its value is checked. Cut the code as shown and paste it into a conditional that will render the widget according to its state. If the status is true it will change the position to the width of the widget, minus the width of the widget and the right margin, giving the value of minus 26. See that it is working correctly, but we will change the background color if it is active, placing the active color object in the background. In case you want a widget without animation we finished this tutorial here, however I will teach you how to animate properties inside the QPainter. Let's start by creating a new parameter that will contain our animation curve and apply it to a Q property animation. Create a Q property animation and in the name of the parameter put circle position, these parameters that we will create soon. In the animation curve add the parameter that we just created. And in animation time 500 milliseconds. Note that when running the application an error is generated saying that this property does not yet exist, so what we are going to do is create it now. We are going to create a floating type property, and we are going to use a Python decorator for this. Create a function below with the exact name created in the Q property animation property. Also create a new internal object with the same name to facilitate identification with the value 3 which in this case is the initial left margin. Once this is done, link this object to our circle position. We will create the setter using a decorator. The setter must contain the same name as the parameter we want to animate, followed by the word setter. Once this is done, Create the circle position function with an additional parameter called POS, which will set this value to the circle position object we just created. Followed by the self update function that will update the widget interface during the animation. When we run the application, an error is generated because I typed the wrong decorator name. Just make this adjustment and test again. See that no error is generated, but the animation still does not work. This is because we need to apply the circle position object where we want to animate it, which in this project will be the left margin of the circle. Set in the position in the two draw ellipse as shown in the video. Let's replace the debug function with the function that will trigger our animation. Replace the name for start transition. Start by placing an animation stop to stop the animation if running. Create a conditional that will check the value, if true, it will set the end value for the width of our widget minus the margin and width of the circle. Otherwise, it will return the value as 3, which is the default margin of our object if it is not checked. 
And to finish we need to start the animation after setting the end value. Note that when running the animation an error occurred, because I typed the wrong name again, in this case the name of the function start transition. Once this is done, we have our animation working correctly whenever the state of the button is changed. If you want, you can change the initial animation curve to the one you think is best. You can also set this parameter directly at the time of creating your widget in the main window, which in this case would be the correct way, as well as customizing the other parameters, like the colors for example. Let's test some more parameters to better exemplify. I will add two more widgets with different parameters and sizes. After that, just take the time to better study all the functions that we created in this tutorial. Don't forget to practice at home, because it is essential for learning. And we finish here another tutorial. Thanks guys to everyone who watched this video so far. The source code for this project is available to Patreon supporters at the link below. Thanks to all Patreon supporters. See you in the next video.